Hey guys, uh, just bought myself a brand new battery charger. Lots of reviews on YouTube about it. Um, the reason I'm making this video is I have an ATV over here. I use it for winter to snowplow. During the summer, we use it for playing. Anyway, uh, to make a long story short, I'll try to, uh, battery or ATV started fine all summer long once winter hit. About halfway into winter, started having issues with it starting and was having to jump start it. Um, did a load test on the battery and the battery is bad, so I bought a brand new battery for it um, for this season. So we had all summer again this summer, used the battery, hit winter again, and it starts doing exactly the same damn thing. Um, starts having to be jump started. Um, I live in a cold area, it snows, and it got down to like five or six degrees this, this winter, and uh, I wasn't running a trickle charger on my battery, and uh, motorcycle batteries don't like the cold. Guessing that's what caused the battery to go bad, so uh, anyway, bought another new battery, so it's got a new battery in it now, um, and it runs and starting great, but this battery that we're getting ready to show you is a Napa battery. It's actually the first original one. I actually, when I took it out of my motorcycle, I set it to the side and I never threw it away. So it's the original one. I uh, hooked it to a normal charger and it actually charged up. It says 12.6, but it actually fails under a load test still. So we're gonna try the new battery charger. We're gonna, it's got a uh, repair mode um, where it desulfates the battery and it's supposed to repair it. Uh, it says in the directions to leave it on for about two hours for motorcycle batteries and for full-size car batteries four hours So we're gonna go ahead and hook that up now And we're gonna go ahead and see if it will actually repair this before we do that I'm gonna show you that it will fail the load test that way we can test it again later if it does pass So let's hook these up here these cables here Positive to positive let's See if we can get this thing to do a load test for you. Uh, some of these other batteries we have are for our jet skis that we have here in the garage. And I have one on a, uh, as you can see, I had one on a, um, a smart charger maintainer. So here we go, we got it um, hooked up. You can see here, it's literally in the green, just above the 12, the arrow. We're gonna go ahead and put a thing, and you'll see it go straight down to bad. It's at bad, as you can see when I put it under load and it's over at 12 and a half to 12.6 volts uh, as far as the charge is concerned. So again, watch the needle go down to bad. It's at bad, it doesn't work. Now, just to show you a good battery, I will go to the motorcycle battery over here that's on the trickle charger. I'll go ahead and take this off of here. This has just been sitting on just to keep it maintained and not allow this battery to freeze or go bad like the other batteries have been doing so we're going to go ahead and put this one on here same way i just did that other one the way i can show you that this thing i'm testing it with does work oops don't lose these batteries over the side of this okay now you'll see that this also is now on the, just above the green at about 13 volts and you watch the needle go here on it in a second. Let's see if I can hold it. There we go. Here we go. And you can see it's down in the yellow at 10 volts. It does not drop below 9.6. So this battery is actually good. So that's what a good one's supposed to look like. And that's testing good. So I showed you guys the Napa battery. We're gonna go ahead now and hook it up to the new charger. Now I just bought it. I just came in today. So it is brand new. I haven't tried it yet. You guys will get to sit here and witness with me how to use it and um, whether it's going to work or not. So this will be a fun experiment to see if this thing will really repair or not repair. We'll find a spot to plug it into here. Let's see what I have here. Actually, I actually have an extension cord here on the ground. I'll just plug it into it. It'll make it easier for me. All right. Now what it said was to hook it up in the directions it says... Before you plug it in, go ahead and set up the charger. Hook the cables up, positive first, negative second. 
Um, they did mention something about there are some batteries that are reversed or the electronics can be reversed on certain vehicles. Not sure which ones those are. Most of the ones I do, US and uh, Ford and Chevy and things like that. It's always positive to positive and negative to negative. Now you can see down here is a negative and a positive. So I did positive first, negative. Now look, it came on and read everything without it even plugged in. It reads the voltage and it also showed it's uh, 18 degrees Celsius and it's 12.4 volts. So like I mentioned earlier, now we'll go to, to these little scans here and you can change it to the settings. And we're going to go to repair. That's repair. And now we're supposed to plug it in. Let's see what the settings say about anything. 12.4 volts. Doesn't say anything. It's supposed to, I guess, flash or something they said. So we're going to see here as soon as I unplug or unwind these wire ties that I have here. It's hard to hold with my phone and do this all at the same time. Okay, then we'll plug this in to my charger here, my plug. Okay, there it says pulsing, UL for pulsing. It says recovery mode. And my understanding is you just, I don't know if it's gonna um, actually say it's already repaired or if you just leave it on. Cause when I read the directions, it said, just leave it on for like two hours. I can hear the fan running. It's nice and quiet. Um, I don't know. Like this charger I have sitting here, I guess it wouldn't matter if you leave it up or down, but I'm gonna just leave it exactly the way it is. And I'm gonna leave it on for two hours and then we'll check it again. So we'll be back in two hours, but let's see, does it say, it just shows the percentages there as it charges it. It's interesting, it goes all the way from 20% up and then it goes 80 to 100 and it just keeps pulsing, so. We'll set the timer for two hours from now, and uh, we'll be back. All right, it's actually 9 p.m. It's been on for three hours on pulsing. It actually does show it's in winter mode because it's cold out. Now, they say that when it's in the pulsing, it's actually, it is charging it. So if it had good voltage before and it was pulsing it, it may have a full charge. So what we're going to do right now, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it. Plug it for the time being so it shuts off. It should shut off, right? Oh, yeah, okay. Now we're gonna hook up my fluke to it and we're gonna just check the voltage at the battery. Positive and negative here. I'll just put a positive in here and see if I can. It's hard to do with you know one hand here, but let's see if I can get it to read 13.19 volts. So it's showing that it's got a full charge. And we tried to fix it, so it's been three hours. Let's try doing our load test. Now I have not done a regular charge on this where it goes through the normal seven stage that this uh, charger is made to do. But it did say in the directions that it does do a charge on it as it's pulsating. So let's just see if it fixed it or not. So actually the voltage is on that side, so I gotta turn this there. Let's go ahead and set this one up over here and turn it to the positive side. And let's see. Okay, so we are currently at, let me get this up here, sorry. Okay, so you can see the needle, we're gonna press it. It went all the way to bad. As you can see, it's still registering that it's bad. It did not fix this battery. They say that this is supposed to fix the battery by pulsating it. It's been on for three hours and it has not fixed this battery. So now what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm guessing that even though this battery is going to read, probably that it's got a full charge, it's gonna do, I'm gonna put it through the normal seven stage charge. I'm gonna set this mode to motorcycle i'm going to plug it in and see if it tries to go through the seven stage or if it's just going to go straight to 
the uh, um, trickle charge on this because if it reads that it's full I don't think it's going to go through so there it says DF DFS so that means it's going through the um, seven stages of charging this battery right now and so it automatically just starts out with the DFS which is stage one then it should go to stage two after five minutes then it'll go to stage two so I'm just gonna walk away We'll come back in a little bit and see if it says full but it's going to go through the DF dfs which is defulcate defulcate um, and that's uh stage one and stage two to go through trickle charge i believe is what they said and so on so we'll come back a little bit and see if it says full and then see what happens otherwise we'll do the repair again all right so i literally walked away and i came back like five minutes later and it says it's full it's not charging anymore so it defulcated or whatever they call that name uh and um and then it instantly just went to full so which tells you that the battery is supposedly 100 percent. it's not so we're gonna go back and we're gonna try this battery and we're gonna try to see if we can repair it so it is a brand new battery that was for a generator that i bought at harbor freight um we use it for one trip um on a camping trip three-day trip came back and we ended up returning the generator um, to Harbor Freight because it was just too loud and we weren't happy about it. But you can't return the battery. Um, in fact, I think I bought the battery online. I didn't buy it for Harbor Freight, so kind of was stuck with the battery. So this battery was purchased two years ago. It was used um, for that trip and then it was just sat and out of use. Um, what I decided to start using it for was to um, drain fuel out of my jet skis um, during the winter when I winterize them. So I have an electric fuel pump that I'll hook to this and then I'll run it to drain the fuel. And um, I don't know if possibly I ran it the last time and then I didn't leave it full. Maybe it's sitting with a little bit less uh, um, charge in it. Could have possibly damaged it, but voltage wise, let's see if I can touch one of these in here. Um, I know the last time I checked it, let's see, 12.4 volts. So, um, and then when you do the load test on it, I'll show you guys a load test. It does not pass a load test. So, um, let's see here if we can hook this one up to there. And this one to here. My goodness, never fun doing all these things, but anyway. Okay, so right here it's going to show it's at uh, on a little battery. 12 volts hit the load charge and it dropped into the bag, but it's not as bad as the other one is. So we're going to try the pulse test on this one. Run it for two hours and see if we can, well, they call it pulse, but it's a repair mode. So we're going to go ahead and unhook this from here. Now, we're gonna go ahead and set it up. So these cables are kind of short, I'm noticing now. So let's see if we can move this battery closer to the charger. We'll move this one down out of the way. This one is just on a maintainer. <clears throat> that battery I showed you earlier, it works fine. So now we're just gonna set this up over here. So currently, I've got my voltmeter sitting here. We'll go ahead and set this up. It says when you disconnect these, it's supposed to reset everything. So I should be okay. Disconnect it, put it on a new battery charger, and let's see what it reads. So it went into DPS. We're going to go ahead and hit mode and go straight to repair. And we're just going to leave it on repair. Just like before, it's actually showing 40%, 40%. It's actually like the other one went 80 100 and then it did what it did but this one's showing from 40 percent it's pulsing and it's on recovery so i'm hoping this one at least will come back because this battery really was pretty damn new and that battery was a couple years old at least so i'm also curious if i could get those caps off and maybe check in there and see if there's anything going on but anyway we'll try this one on repair 
And uh, we'll leave it on for two hours. I'll time it again and check it again in a couple hours. And we'll see what happens. So here we go. All right. All right, it's been two hours. It's 9 p.m. It says it's still pulsing. We're going to check the voltage now and do that test that I discussed earlier. We'll go ahead and um, <clears throat> check the voltage and then we're going to check uh, for load test again on here. So let's see here what we're at here. Let's put this on the little meter. Check the voltage. Let's see here. I'll just stick this one in here. I can let it sit. Touch the ground. 13.75. Alright, now this one did not pass the load test the last time we did it. So we'll try it again now. It's been doing this for two hours. Like I said, they did say the pulse test is literally charging it. It's just pulsing the battery. As you can see, the voltage was higher than the last time we checked it. When we checked it last time, I think it was 12.4. Now it's like 13. So we're going to go ahead and see if this thing passes the voltage drop test. All right. So it's showing there that we've got power. There's the needle, let's do the drop test. It actually is still low, but not as bad. As you can see, it's in the four volt. So it did go up, but it's still not fixed. Did not fix it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just let it pulse all night. I'm gonna go to bed, because the battery is not even warm, not even a little bit warm. So the battery's fine. It's kind of almost like a trickle charge. If I put it on a trickle charge, it would trickle charge. They're saying a trickle charge is a little bit different than pulsing because a trickle charge is gonna read voltage. And if it reads that it's got good voltage, it's not gonna trickle. So, let's start it out again at 20, 40, 60, 20, 40, 60. Now it's just kind of regulating between So I'm just going to leave it on and tomorrow morning I'll try it again because I'm going to bed. It's 11 p.m. I don't feel bad about just leaving this on all night because um, it hasn't, I know it's at 13.4 volts, um, but I don't feel like it's hurting anything. Kind of like a car charger. When your car is running, it's going to charge 13.2 to 14.8. So... I'm guessing I'll be all right. So we're just going to try it and see what happens. If I burn the house down, I know why. All right. All right, interesting. I left it on repair all night. Um, it's uh, afternoon now, about 11 maybe. So just before afternoon. And come out and check the battery, and it actually says off now. So that means that it went completely through the whole pulse thing until it completely repaired the battery or finished charging it and then switched to off so now let's see if the battery is repaired let's see we're gonna check this here we're gonna check the voltage on it because it's been sitting in the off position so i should have had a time to um rest and then uh, have its own dream or whatever through the night. Dang it, let's see if I can get this to stick in here somehow. I did it yesterday and it worked fine, but now it's being a pain. Let's see if I can. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right, and then the ground, the ground. 13.26 volts. So now we'll go ahead and do a load test on it. And let's see if it repaired itself or not. So, move the voltmeter over. Go ahead and set this down next to this. Add a little bit of room. Okay, 
so the needle is reading there and it's good it's repaired it fixed itself guys it dropped down to just above eight almost nine volts for that little battery that battery actually looks like it may have repaired itself so that's exciting it actually did fix it so you got to leave it on all night until it literally says it's full um, don't take it off after two hours like the directions say just leave it on um, this battery is a let's see what the cold cranking amps on it are so uh, cold cranking 135 i mean it's hardly anything at aah so i would guess that that's fine this battery's recovered i'm gonna leave it alone and uh we're gonna i want to drain this one back down is what i really want to do hook it up to something drain it and then let it pulsate all day and try that again so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to see if i can maybe hook up a light or something to it and just let it drain down to about 11 volts 11 and a half volts and then we'll try doing the uh, repair job again on this and just leave it on and see what it does so we'll be back with that one next so in continuation of this video um i had said that this battery took a charge to 12.6 but it would not pass the load test and then we did this battery and uh we were able to recover it well i got some more news for you guys now um this battery says it's an agm battery and it's a sealed battery but there are little notches there and there and there and there so you can get a screwdriver in there and pop those covers back off and i took those covers both off and this battery was completely empty in fact one of the cells had a little bit of blue crystallizing or something going on on the top of it so i bought some distilled water <clears throat> and uh, i topped off the batteries all the holes um, and i put the caps back on and then i ran it again now i haven't tried to drain it or do anything all i did was put it on repair again on the charger set the mode to repair which does a pulse and it'll basically run for a certain amount of hours and either it's reading that the battery's repaired or it just shuts itself off after so many hours so i basically just set it the night before and then let it run and when i come out in the morning it says it's off which is done so i've come out this morning now like i said i've topped this off with water you could see the cloth things in there and they were just totally dried out and it was still reading voltage so um, i put this on this morning come over here to do a load test and the battery's fixed it didn't even drop to 9.6 so this battery is good again all i did was top off the water for the cloth because it's an agm battery you're not supposed to service but they did drain and i don't see any leaks anywhere it did leak some water from the top here from having it on and doing that all overnight it was a little wet on top so it means that it has to have some seepage but this battery is repaired and good now and uh the, it, this charger is amazing so i don't believe everything when they say that the agm batteries are, are maintenance free because <clears throat> the battery does the water does evaporate over time this one also has a little cap on the top of it you could try to pry them back off because these caps are put on they fill them up with the outs and then they just push these down and they're just little plastic caps that squeeze on tightly kind of like a, a regular standard battery the difference is these have cloth so they're supposed to keep the water from slushing and moving around and that's what helps keep them from draining but they do still evaporate and if you're able to get your caps off without damaging them like i did hey i just saved a battery this battery is three years old um at least when i bought my atv this battery was in it and i've had it for at least three years so this is the original battery i ended up buying a brand new battery and putting it in my atv so but now i have a backup so i'm super pleased about it and thought i'd share this with you guys hope this helps you